Right, the game that I'm thinking of is, uh, you know, it's the most fun you can have. A three-letter word that uh, begins with S, ends in X, brings a lot of joy to people. Socks. <laughs> <laughs> SSX. Good, SSX needs to have a reboot because Tricky and SSX3 might be some of the greatest gaming experiences that I've ever had as a kid and as an adult. And then they brought it back with 2013's version or whatever it was, and it was just not the same type of game. The adrenaline was gone, they tried to make everyone look so chonky, and then they had like wingsuits in there, and it was too, they pushed too far for the realism of it, while at the same time saying, no, it's still as wacky and zany as before. It's like the classic um, thing from 30 Rock with uh, Bug-Eyed Man, what's his name again? Uh, the, 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 he's, he's an actor. Uh, this, uh, this uh, he's holding a skateboard and he says, what up my fellow kids? Oh, Steve Buscemi. Steve yes. Buscemi. They call him the chameleon because of his wet eyes. Good. Um, the, um, <laughs> they, they basically brought it, they, they took all the bits away that made it fun. And I wanted SSX Tricky to come back. I wanted that ridiculous adrenaline over the top, the tracks that made no sense logistically, people flying around, punching people off, having catchphrases, Simon Stark being absolutely mad, Moby, your favourite character, Jones. just going around like, blooming eight eyes! He's, ah, oh, brilliant. The, it was just missing all of the character. So if they rebooted it and gave it that sort of edge, they would actually capitalise on a market that just doesn't exist anymore. The extreme sports game, like Skate has just gone. Like, uh, like any sort of sporting title, apart from bloody Madden and FIFA, uh, where, where are they? Yeah. There aren't anything like that. So I'm hoping that if they ever see the light of day again, they will choose to go down the route of Tricky 2 and keep the amazing soundtrack, the amazing airs, and bring back the characters, please, because Simon Stark deserves to come back once more. French toast. French toast and syrup! My choice uh, involves most people saying, hey Rich, you hairy idiot, they've already rebooted this once. But I think they should do it again. I think Activision need to sort themselves out and they're currently on a trend of remastering things. And this, a remaster is the best way to reboot a series because they tried rebooting Guitar Hero back in 2013, 14, 15, something like that with Guitar Hero Live. That's a big, big time difference. Shut up, Jules. Uh, <laughs> and it, and it, honestly, it's it, Guitar Hero Live isn't terrible. I think it was a, a good stab at rebooting it, but it just didn't do very well. And it's a shame because Guitar Hero is fantastic. I've been going back to it recently, playing the old Guitar Hero Rock Band games, and it's like, I could do, I could do it in you. Um, but the only way that they could do that again and get people interested in Guitar Hero again is to go back and for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, remaster Guitar Hero 3 oh, first. Yes. Yeah. The best one. Do that first, get, get everyone to buy their plastic controllers again, make it so the old ones don't work, that's the only way the, the series made money, that's why the series failed, because everyone had their guitars, they were just trying to sell physical games and that wasn't making as much money, so that's why it all died. Um, but yeah, they start again, reboot Guitar Hero with Guitar Hero 3 Remastered, which would be incredible. I don't see why it'd be horrendously hard, because back when the series, back when those games were like really, really big and they were just saturating the market, licensing for music became really, really tough because so many games were trying to do it. Now that's not the case, I don't see how hard it would be to get all those licenses back and maybe a bit more on top. And then they can go around and turn around and say, hey, here's Guitar Hero 6? maybe yeah. for the next one but i just want music games to be a big thing again i want i've already got like four plastic guitars at home i want five what songs do you want on this one they could put ghost oh, in it they could put ghost in it i want some mcfly in it there's no mcfly in oh, any rage. guitar hero ever shut up scott <laughs> Well, I want to see, I've got a whole bunch of obscure PS1 games and I, I'm going to go firstly with Vib Ribbon oh. because it was amazing. If you haven't played Vib Ribbon, it's like this wireframe thing. Da -da 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 -da. I think you mentioned it on an old video actually because that's just how much it's ingrained in us plus 30 years. And you sort of evolve and devolve based on how well you match uh, rhythm prompts. But the whole trick with that game is that you could put any CD in and it would generate levels based on the music that was on the CD. Um, so if you want to make it harder, put some thrash metal into it. If you want to ease it up, put some 
McFly. McFly in. Yeah, they weren't around in the 90s, I don't think. But were they even born then? Yeah, with Vid Ribbon, though, I think if they brought it back, you could easily just do, you know, use like digital libraries of music. You could bring Spotify stuff into it, do what Dangerous Driving did and sort of match the game to a Spotify playlist, let that populate the world and things like that. Um, also, in terms of obscure PS1 games, I'll be amazed if anyone knows what this is. There was a game called Chase the Express on PS1. It did look terrible. It probably was terrible, to be honest. I mean, what did I know? Six. But I loved it at the time. And uh, that game is pretty much a whole game of the Uncharted 2 train sequence. Just, you know, just your secret agent man. You've got to go and take care of the, the terrorists probably doing stuff. I don't know. They probably got a bomb. I don't know. With that, though, they, um, people have already, because there's a little, there's a tiny little fandom around Chase the Express. And so people have already made an HD uh, upgrade of it with different sort of like modded screenshots to show what it might look if a man was on a train in 4K, which I'm loving. It, it looks pretty good. Um, last one, most serious entry is Soul Reaver, because yes. that game was the thing that Amy Hennig first worked on before she went uh, over to Naughty Dog and did Uncharted and stuff. Um, and Soul Reaver, I was going to say, if you haven't played it, I mean, imagine not playing Soul Reaver. But some people wouldn't have been on this earth at that point. So go check out Soul Reaver's opening cutscene. It's like Shakespearean, gothic, um, epic stuff with like Kane, who's this like aging vampire who gets annoyed. His underling Raziel has developed wings before he has, so he cuts them off and he throws Raziel down the, this big pit of despair thing. Thinks he's all dead and everything. And then Raziel talks to this like voice of the earth, this, voice, this spirit thing who's all like, you're worthy, you shouldn't die. Blah. Go back and get your revenge. And he plays like this weird half wraith dead vampire thing with a nice scarf and you bit of dab and you go and take care of Kane. It's the best thing ever, really. And they've never come back. They've never been HD. They've never been anything. So Soul Reaver, 100%. Do it. Do, do it now. Okay, go on, get I'm, I'm... it. Forza Horizon 4 is probably a really great, well, probably one of the best arcade racing games of this generation. And it, while playing it, I was like really missing the, the early days of Need to Speed Underground 2 and also Burnout 3 Takedown. And they were just like some amazing like arcade games, especially if you rebooted Need for Speed Underground 2 nowadays, it would be so much better. But the reason why New Speed nowadays hasn't been doing so well is because of the customization. If you take the customization of Need for Speed Underground 2 and reboot it essentially, and even like add in a bit more customization to it, like GTA 5 and stuff like that, it would be such an amazing game, like with updated graphics and a brand new engine. And like, if you can see what they did with Need for Speed Heat, only the graphics and everything like that, except for the handling because that was piss poor. It's um, it was honestly like, it was it was honestly it looked like a pretty good game, but because of the customization, it just had nothing for it. Um, Forza Horizon 4 is in the same vein. Like, it's really great, but there's not not as much customization as you want to put into it. Like, I just wanted like a 20 foot spoiler on the back or like spinners and stuff like that. Just some really like chavy crap on it, like tribal tattoos and stuff. Just something like that. And even like the arcade racing of Burnout 3 Takedown really needs to like come back into the next generation, essentially. It's mm. just, it's one of those games that just hasn't like been evolved into um, like recent um, games, essentially. The video game I'd like to be rebooted, I thought back to my past on what games I enjoyed and I thought back a little bit further to the games <laughs> I also enjoyed that were further in the past, um, which is the Sega arcade days. Um, where I've had like the uh, the ports on the little handheld like rip off machines that you get where have all the things on and uh, my two favorite games on those always that I'd always play and me and my dad have competitions on were Golden Axe and Altered Beast and both of those I think would be ripe for the reboot picking. I forgot my words in the middle of that. <laughs> right. Golden Axe itself has had an attempted reboot with Beast Rider, which was like some pseudo open worldy, very typical high fantasy. It didn't do anything basically. It was like 15 million quid or something pumped into this game that didn't do what it needed to do and didn't follow the normal like Golden Axe formula, which is just side scrolling, beat em up, have a good time, get your Golden Axe out, hack people, jump on the dragon, shoot some flame balls, oh my god, all the fun high fantasy things but done in the side scroller fashion. So basically because Streets of Rage 4 is coming out, this would be the logical like step for them to take to do with uh, Golden Axe, I think that would be perfect. Um, and it's just, it's just big, big dumb fun, I think the guy's name is Thunderhead, if you're the uh, Gilead Thunderhead. Gilead Thunderhead, if you're the the dwarf, and the the woman's called like Lady Flame Hat. What's the, what's she called again? Like T the Flame. Tilia Flame. Tilia. Yeah, I think so. Titia. Titia. Uh, Tiris Flare. Tiris Flare, and then just. Axe, axe, battle. axe battle, yeah. But thinking of side scroller beat em ups, you can't say side scroller beat em up without Altered Beast, baby. I love that game. I love how goofy and campy and wonderful it is, and you just you have to get all your three little 
growth <laughs> growth balls uh, to turn into uh, a were wolf or a were tiger or a were creature. Didn't he uh, turn into a dragon at one point. Yeah, well, a were dragon. Yeah, they, yeah. Oh. Well, I think what they should do with that for a reboot is not necessarily do it in the Streets of Rage um, scroll assault. I think they should go to the Golden Axe Altered Beast version. Beast Rider. Golden Axe Altered Beast is what it should be, colon. Um, but they should take inspiration from that and do it right and basically take the story of it, which is, I think it's Zeus or a god who's like brought this guy back and is like, hey, go rescue this person for me, please. Um, and then gives him the powers of magic to transform into a beast to be able to do it because you go into the legions of the underworld and that sort of thing. So I think taking all of the, the mythology from it and turning it into a wide spun game and do it kind of like God of War I, style. I say, you basically say Alter Beast God of War. Yeah, uh, Alter Beast God of War, I, I think that would do great. But Alter Beast is one of the ones that has never had an attempted reboot or a revival or anything like that. It's had its game, it's had its ports and it's in like the Sega family, but um, just hasn't come around since. So I think it, again, ripe for the reboot picking. So yeah, that's what I would say. Those two would be very good. Well, I was coming in here to say Silent Hill, but I think that's a bit more obvious. Everyone in the entire world wants a Silent Hill reboot. Please, Konami, just do this franchise justice. I know you're not going to because you're bad crack, but please, just for me. So on the same lines, I was thinking, what other great survival horror game do I want to see, you know, get a second lease on life? And that is Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. Because I didn't actually play this game back when it came out because I didn't have a GameCube. But I obviously became a cult favorite over the years and then I went and watched a few playthroughs. And the things that game does well are so interesting and unique. It has this thing called, as the title suggests, a sanity meter, where the more um, that gets fractured, the more weird things start happening to your game. It might, you know, pretend to delete your saves. It might throw some hallucinations at you. And that's obviously been done since, but not, I don't think, in a really big AAA game and not in a way where it's a core, you know, part of the title. I know titles like Amnesia did it, but for me, it's never been realized as well as that game did it. And I want to see a sequel or a reboot go all in on that um, idea, because I think that title just had a lot of good interesting concepts like it was structured in a non-linear fashion you controlled a bunch of different characters and each chapter was a part of a different you know section of the timeline so you had to piece it together it had all these interesting structural and formal you know things going for it it's just that the gameplay itself um, never really you know lived up to it it didn't have the execution there it didn't have you know this stylistic flair of resident evil because there's a lot about that game that i don't really like i don't like the look of the enemies i don't think it's that particularly oh, scary then the combat uh, it's not great so I think if you take the good parts, reboot it in a modern contemporary context, you might be able to keep some of the sillier stuff, but keep the cosmic elements, surely. Go down a more Lovecraftian route and then smash them together to form this lovely, horrific baby, not unlike the one in P.T. Sink. And you'll come out with something genuinely excellent at a time when I feel like horror is overdue a resurgence. Real survival horror, you know, games and franchises bring it back. Saying that, there was a Kickstarter for a sequel a few years ago, which failed about three times. So I don't know if anyone else wants this game, but please, please give me it. You know, do me a favor, Konami. I don't know, find a way. You know, if you're going to continue being bad crack, I don't even think you own the license. I'm pretty sure you don't. But for me, find a way for your old pal, Josh. Can you say no to that face? <laughs> exactly. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Now, if you want more chatty faces, why not watch through the rest of our playlist? But I just want to say a big thank you to the brilliant channel sponsors for voting on this week's chatty question. And if you want to join the vote, then why not consider hitting the join button and becoming a sponsor today? And we will see you next week. Bye!